Hi everyone. If I look stressed tonight, it's because um, my daughter's just about to have her 18th birthday party, hence the, uh, the fairy lights and things like that. So I'll be running off screaming later, I think. Anyway, I thought this week I'd talk a little bit about um, modes and uh, what modes are, how to play against them, because uh, I was looking online recently and I saw all kinds of uh, strange ways of viewing them that uh, seem quite confusing. Um, so, uh, for example, um, people seem to be focusing purely on the fact that they were, uh, you know, the modes were based on the scale terms of, say, the C major scale, which they are. But, um, and I even saw people sort of numbering or labelling... Labelling, say, that position of the C major scale as E Phrygian, just because it starts on an E note. Uh, and this is really not, not too helpful in, 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 in trying to conceptualise modes. The, the whole point really of a mode is the mode is, is, is a sort of a, is a harmonic device. It's the, it, what, what defines a mode is the harmony behind it and how the harmony is arranged, not, not the, the root note of the scale that you're playing. Um, and, and the best way of thinking about it is, is that that scale, for example, has no kind of... Uh, it's, it's very modally ambiguous because it's got no harmony behind it. Whereas if I, if I play a C major chord and then play those notes... I'm playing C major or I'm playing the C Ionian mode because I'm playing it in this sort of C major context, playing those notes in a C major context and that makes a C Ionian mode. Similarly, if I play an A minor chord, and play exactly the same notes, uh, and put different emphasis on them, then I, I make a minor sound, I'm, I'm, I've got a minor context, or I've got an, I'm playing the Aeolian mode. So, so it's all about the, the harmonic context that you're playing in that defines the mode, not, not necessarily the starting note of the scale, if you see what I mean. So, and really when you think about Phrygian and Lydian and Mixolydian, you should be thinking about uh, uh, the Phrygian harmony, the Mixolydian harmonies, these, these sort of modal harmonic contexts and how you play against them. Just like you do when you play against the major scale, you, you're thinking about the major chord and the major uh, tone centres and things like that. You're thinking about what works against the major chord and what notes that you'd emphasise to, to bring out that, that sound. Versus playing against a minor chord, you'd be thinking about well, what notes work against a minor chord, and how do I bring that sound out? And that's that's kind of the mindset that you need when you're working against Lydian and Dorian and Mixolydian and Phrygian and the rest. So, the question then is, well, how do I do that? You know, the big problem when you're first learning to play against modes is. How do I stop myself, if I'm playing E Phrygian, how do I stop myself just sounding like I'm running up and down a C major scale? How do I bring out that, that sort of Phrygian-ness of the, of, the, of the mode that I'm playing in? And, and there is, if, if you've already uh, learned to play against major and minor chords, you, you're kind of halfway there. Um, so let, let me see if I, I can explain. If, if you think about the, uh, the scales as sit, sitting on a spectrum, at one end you've got the, let's say, the major scale, which the nice thing about the major scale is you can, you can create some really nice complex sort of melodic lines using the major scale. But harmonically it's quite ambiguous in and of itself. Now you can emphasize certain chord turns and things like that. You can emphasize certain notes over another, but the scale itself is quite harmonically ambiguous, which is why you struggle when you're playing in an E Phrygian environment if you don't know how to bring out the Phrygianness of the scale, because it's it, it's ambiguous as I say. 
At the other end of the spectrum, you've got chord tones, you've got the triad. So if you can play the E minor chord tones themselves. And they are very harmonically focused. They immediately say, I'm an E minor. But melodically, there's nothing to them. There are only three notes in an octave, and you can't do very much with three notes in an octave. So you've got this spectrum where at one end you've got um, the major scale, which is seven notes in an octave, which is harmonically ambiguous, and the other end of the scale you've got the, the spectrum, you've got chord tones where you've got three notes in a scale, but they're, they're very harmonically coherent, but melodically you can't do very much with them. So, there is a halfway house which you can take advantage of, which sits between these two, two ends of the spectrum, which is the pentatonic scale. And the pentatonic scale has five notes in an octave. And the nice, there are three nice things about the pentatonic scale. Firstly, it's somewhat harmonically focused. Uh, it's not entirely so, so you'd use the same pentatonic scale against in a major context and in a minor context, so it's, it's kind of ambiguous like that. But, but it does have some harmonic focus to it. And also, it has enough notes for you to be able to play um, music with it. You can play melodies with it. You know, you can do solos just using a pentatonic scale. So, and the third thing it's got going for it is most people know how to play it. Most people know how to play a pentatonic scale in a major environment and bring out the sort of the major sounds in it. And similarly, you know how to play it against minor chords to bring out and know how to emphasize that minor sound. So it's, it's a, um, a scale that's really quite useful for you. It's, it, it sits right in your comfort zone. So how do we apply this to playing modes? Well, the nice thing, as I say, the, the, the pentatonic will bring out the fundamental majorness and the, or the minorness. And for, for six of the seven modes, the, the fundamental chords are major chords or minor chords. And we already know how to play a pentatonic scale against a major chord or against a minor chord. And the, the other thing you will find is that the modal colour is introduced with the two notes that sit outside the pentatonic scale. So you can use the pentatonic scale to establish your, your chord centre, your harmonic centre, and then introduce modal colour with the two extra notes that you, you can introduce out, which are outside of the pentatonic scale. So let, let me uh, give you some worked examples. So if I wanted to play the um, E Lydian, for example, uh, I know that the E Lydian has all the notes of the B major scale. Uh, uh, it's the E Lydian, the root chord, is an E major chord. And I know that when I play an e, against an E major chord, when, when I line up the pentatonic, I'll stick my little finger, let's say, on the 12th fret. And so that, that immediately establishes an e-tonal centre for the, for the solo that I want to play. And the, the modalness, the modal colour, is, is introduced by the two extra notes, which, which are the D-sharp and the A-sharp. And it's this A-sharp in particular, the sharp four, that gives the E-lydian its, its particular colour. See, I'm using the pentatonic to establish my key center, but I'm using that sharp and fourth to establish, to, to introduce a modal color. Uh, so you see how I'm using the pent pentatonic in, in, in this environment to, to sort of anchor. Let's do it with, a, with another one. Let's try the E Dorian. I'll use, I'm using E as my just because I can, I can sustain an E note and it will give you some harmonic context. So E Dorian, 
E Dorian is based on the D major scale. Um, the E chord in the D major is E minor. Um, so when I play e, an E minor pentatonic, I put my first finger on the 12th fret. And then the Dorianness is introduced by a sharpened sixth, which is actually the in terms of the the pattern itself, it's a, it's the same position as as with the previous one. But you can see. see how I can use the pentatonic, using it in a minor context to establish the, the harmonic centre and then introduce the colour with the additional uh, notes, that, that additional sharpened sixth. Um, let's do it with the mixolydian. So the E mixolydian is, is the E chord in, in an A, A major. Uh, so it's all the notes of the A major scale, but the root chord is, is the E chord. So that's, that's an E major. Uh, the modal colour is introduced by the flattened seventh. So there again, you can see how I'm establishing my E harmonic context with the pentatonic scale. Start introducing the colours. And there's my colour. There's my modal colour. And there we go. So that's a mixolydian. Let's try the Phrygian. So the Phrygian is all the notes of the C major scale but focused on the E, so the E chord is an E minor chord. And so I position my pentatonic scale as though I'm playing against an E minor chord. But let's introduce some modal colour. So the modal colour in this case is established with a flattened second. to establish the root, uh, the harmonic context, and then I'm introducing the modal colour with the additional notes that sit outside of the pentaton. And that's the basic approach. You use that. Obviously, the, the other three that I haven't played through is, the, is, is essentially the major scale, which is just playing against the major scale, and the minor scale, which is just playing against the minor scale. The final one is the Locrian mode, and that's, that's the oddball. Um, it doesn't really lend itself to the uh, minor seventh pentatonic. You can, you can use this approach. Uh, a better pentatonic to use is the dominant ninth pentatonic, if you know that. You can, you can apply that one in the same way. do something on the, the dominant ninth uh, pentatonic at, at some later date, because uh, I know not many people are aware of it. 
but it is a useful pentatonic scale to have in, in, in the bag and it works very well against the mixolydian mode. So that's it. Hopefully that was useful for you. Not so much playing this time, but hopefully that gives you some context and ways of bringing this kind of modal playing into your own music. So, good luck and wish me luck with my daughter's birthday. <laughs> See you next week. Bye bye.